Hey guys, this is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. What's up, it's your girl Sasha Banks, legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. You like that? What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time, and his lovely, gorgeous wife, Marie. <laughs> and you are going in SmackDown Live. This is the glorious one, Bobby Roode, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. Yeah, welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson and available wherever fine podcasts are. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, a little notify bell next to it to make sure you're always getting your new Going In Raw daily notifications. Yes. We're also available wherever fine podcasts can be found. We have a great partnership with CastBox. Be sure to check them out. It's free on iOS and Android devices. It's a huge way to support going in raw, free and easy. Uh, just uh, log in a cast box or download it rather. Go to going in raw and uh, hit the subscribe button. If you want to leave us a comment. Yeah, it's a great way, a uh, free and easy way to support going in raw. It is. Um, we're also available uh, at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash going in raw. We're available at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Lots of great ways to support going in raw and the the latest and greatest. We sold 60 shirts during the Extreme Rules reaction live stream. Man. I want to say thanks to everybody yes. for coming out, all the Super Chats for supporting Going In Raw, and the friendomarket.com. Uh, we sold 60 of these slayest t-shirts. It's a t-shirt, three stickers, and a postcard. Uh, it's a brand new endeavor for us, the friendomarket.com. Go check it out. We're gonna, I'm going to keep the price at $25 for the slayest uh, sticker pack. Uh, through, uh, I'll say Monday. I'll say Monday. Uh, yeah, that's good. We'll do it. We'll do it through the live stream tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways. Uh, so now that's out of the way. We're here to talk about WWE Extreme Rules 2018. It was a show. It was a show. That's true. Um, these long shows are kind of interesting because a lot goes on and there was with all together well there's 12 matches in total between the the main card and the kickoff show um three of which were longer than 10 minutes <laughs> yeah that sounds about right that sounds about right so when when you look at it that way it definitely in a lot of respects feels like a, a, a glorified episode of either raw or smackdown uh, because i you, wouldn't go the, if you look at the results i wouldn't go i wouldn't say that well i'm the same base bobby on, lashley beat Bron, uh roman reigns let me finish, but just based on the length of the matches that oh, was the okay. only metric i was using for oh, that comparison okay. i'll tell you what that uh yeah so yeah it was just a, it was a weird show it was a weird show I mean, we've come to expect for extreme rules uh, our fair share of overbooking they really went heavy. Gimmick on that. matches. Yeah. Spots. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they they did get really heavy, especially with the overbooking on a couple yeah. of these matches. They were just convoluted matches. A lot of stuff didn't make sense. I'm, I'll put it this way. I'm not going to say it was boring. What was that? What was that pay per view we did? Uh, with live stream reaction where half of it was us doing impressions of was that backlash. I think it was backlash. That was boring. That was that boring. was boring. that was the first of the the new co branded pay per views after Mania. Yeah. This wasn't boring. No, it wasn't this great. It wasn't particularly good either. Yeah. So, I mean, at least, you know, look, last thing you want is boring wrestling. That's, that's the yeah. last thing you want. Yeah, we didn't do a whole lot of uh, impersonations this time. So. No, we didn't. That um, means we, and for the most part, our audience were engaged in the show. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, it, it was, it was yeah, like you said, it, was, it, it had a breezy pace. I like that. That's the way of looking at it. <laughs> you know, it, it moved from match to match to match. I love the Shinsuke Nakamura thing. Oh, that was good. It seemed to set up a lot of stuff. Yeah, maybe. Kind of. There were some definitive endings. It's all over the map. Let's it just really start from the beginning. Start, start, we, we missed most of the, the, the pre-show because we were setting up. Yep. Um, we caught the end of Andrade Almas versus Sin Cara. Mm -hmm. um, Almas went over with a hammerlock DDT yeah. preceded by his running corner knees. Yeah. Um, the expected result, um, I'll check the match out later and see if it, uh, it compares to their match on SmackDown, which was very good. Yeah. Um, next, Sanity versus New Day in a tables match. Um, they teased a, a spot where, where Big E was about to do his spear through the ropes to a couple members of Sanity to put him through the table because it was you know in position to do so. Didn't happen. Ooh. And uh, there was this great spot where uh, New Day members, Big E and Xavier Woods, had a couple of the Sanity guys like in power bomb position, but the Sandy guys were on the rope. Kofi jumped off the top rope, double stomp 
on to Sandy members. That was great. Yeah, that was good stuff. That in was the good end, stuff. though, uh, Alexander Wolf and Kofi were kind of, you know, like jockeying for position on the apron, holding on the top rope. Um, Eric Young dropped the top rope elbow on the Kofi, mm-hmm. putting him through the table. Sandy goes over. Yeah. Um, so that's good. They needed that. Oh yes. I was I was actually pretty I, I I you won predictions handedly. Oh yeah. Um but yeah, I I I kind of figured I don't think sanity I don't know. They never really needed wins. I mean, I know they need to win to be a threat. Yeah. I get that. But you can book them to lose all the time and still have them sort of threatening because they could be freaky. It's like the Bray Wyatt thing. If they had booked him right, he could lose and lose and lose. Yeah. As long as he gets the, in his mind, the moral victory. Yeah. Sanity's kind of. Well, the same he way. can't lose and lose and lose. He has to win sometimes. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, he can't. He can't lose against jobbers. No. He should have beat Randy Orton or Mania two years ago. Yeah, man. Anyways, oh, one thing we got to point out too: Sin Cara had some fantastic outfits. Oh, that was fantastic! His threads were kicking. They were good. They looked like uh, space. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Anything else, Dad? No. All that right. that kicked off the actual show. This was a surprise. Yeah. The leaders of worlds dropped their Raw Tag Team uh, Championships titles to the B Team. Yeah, that was pretty much I thought a near shoe in that uh, Matt and Bray would retain those titles. But I guess yeah. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say the finish though. Maybe they're they're thinking of breaking them up already. I don't know because there's that spot where Bo pushed Matt into Bray as Bray was trying to get back in the ring, um, sending Bray to the outside, and then uh, uh, Bo hits his finisher on Matt, picks up the win. What's hey, what's one good thing? What's I'm sorry. What's one thing that Vince uh, does a lot? Um, Change his mind. That's a million. That, there's a million answers you can give. Totally. Um, he likes to, uh, you know, beat a dead horse. Yeah. Run things into the ground. Yes. If he was as enamored with the um, deletion video, the uh, pre-filmed uh, Hardy compound video they mm-hmm. did with Bray Wyatt, mm-hmm. why wouldn't he have said, do that all the time? It couldn't have been that costly. No, I wouldn't think so. Like, why wouldn't they have gone all in on that? I think that this could have been amazing. Especially with... You know, Bo being Bray's brother and all that stuff. Yeah. Even even before the B team, mm-hmm. they didn't do anything with Matt and Bray that took advantage of that thing. I know. That was the entire I that was the entire reason for having Matt Hardy do the Woken thing, you know? I mean he's now he's just another character, which is fine. I mean, it's good for him. He's get, you know, obviously he's on TV a lot. He's just yeah, yeah, the tag yeah, titles. Yeah. And I'm sure him and Bray will probably do a thing at SummerSlam. Yeah. Maybe leading to SummerSlam, they'll do a pre film thing. I just figured, man, why wouldn't they go there every week? It was fascinating. It was great. It was creative. You I know. know? I it know. was fun. More, more than maybe, anything, maybe, fun. maybe part of it, though, is also the WWE's road schedule doesn't allow them time to do that. Where in TNA, you go, you know, once every two months to do a bunch yeah. of TV tapings. And otherwise, yeah. you have all, all this time to. To, to entertain other creative ideas and shoot stuff like that. Yeah. But if you're on the road four to five days a week, th- I mean, three out of four weeks of every month, it's a lot harder to do. Is the house show schedule so important that, you know it what I mean? It seems to be the Vince. Right? Because in, even in the face of, of injuries, he's unwilling, seemingly, to change that schedule whatsoever. Maybe part of it, you know, you know I, I, don't, I don't know in terms of, percentage of income for the wrestlers what they make at house show versus tv taping mm, that versus could be too, yeah. but it could just be more advantageous for the talent to do the house shows that could be because as well. that, they can they might earn majority of their income yeah or a substantial enough portion of their income yeah to uh not be willing to drop a large portion of the house shows because i don't know if say you know they drop the house show and then the pay would increase for tv you know i don't yeah, know i don't know i don't know that's don't a good know. point that's a good point um, and anyway, like you said, there was a, a bit where uh, Bo pushed Matt into Bray, knocking him out of the ring, um, which could lead to something between uh, Matt and Bray getting back into it. Although it still feels feels like just yesterday they were already they were feuding. Yeah, yeah. This title run title run has not been that long. It's been three months. Yeah, ish. Um, so uh, Bo Dallas got the pin on Matt um, after. Uh, I think it's like draping. Uh, Crossroads neck breaker type yeah. deal. Yeah, I like that move. And then afterwards, uh, B team did an interview. It was cute. Um, what's his face? Uh, Curtis Axel said that he feels like Stretch Armstrong did when he went to the moon. Yeah. Obviously, different Armstrong went to the moon. Neil. But I thought it was pretty damn funny. It Anyways, was funny. They're they're endlessly charismatic. I'm just seriously surprised. Like the last time we saw an act like this, 
Yeah, um, Slater and Rhino. Yeah. Yeah, pick up those titles. Like, they flirted with it with uh, Breezango. Mm-hmm. Didn't go there on SmackDown. Now we have this with the B team. Um, I'm glad about this. And I hope, I mean, maybe we'll get B team versus Matt and Bray, you know. At the compound at, the at some compound. point. Yeah. You know, do something like if that. If they want the storyline to continue, who knows? Yeah. Apparently they foreshadowed it with uh, Matt did a promo. I forget it was before the match or during the pre the kickoff where he said that, you know, change is inevitable. They changed the titles. Uh, so anyways, after that, we had a Kurt Angle interview where he addressed the Brock Lesnar situation. Yes. He said he has reopened negotiations with Paul Heyman. However, they have basically fallen apart. And so he is uh, providing Brock uh, what is it, like three options? Well, I said an ultimatum, but then there's yeah. three options. So come to Raw tomorrow night. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Come to terms on a match. Come to terms on a defense. Yeah. Or get stripped of the belt. Built. Or yeah, he's gonna strip him of the title. Yeah. Um, which of those? So he's probably not gonna be at Raw. No. So he'll probably do the second option. I would think so. And he will it, come to terms. I would think so, and I think what it's probably gonna end up being. Oh, and he mentioned the UFC thing. Yes. Well, he said, yeah, yeah. He said Brock doesn't want to come back. He'd rather go uh, to UFC, mm-hmm. challenge the fight there, than defend his title. The whole point, and this fits with rumors and reports have been hearing that Vince wants to tell the story of Brock not caring about WWE, not caring about wrestling. Yeah. Already has his eyes on UFC. He doesn't want to drop the title in advance of his return to the octagon. Um, and I don't know, Heyman, did Heyman call out Lashley in that long Facebook post he did a few weeks back? I kind of thought he did, but I never read it. I thought I remember hearing. Anyways, I feel like he did not, because Lashley was still in the thing with Sami Zayn. Yeah. Um, continue. Anyways, I'll look it up but anyways, my my thought is now that Lashley um, is the you know more or less number one contender after beating Reigns, mm-hmm. that maybe it's going to be Lashley that brings Brock back, um, since you know they have comparable MMA pedigrees. Um, yeah. You know, both very successful professional wrestling careers. Um, maybe that's the challenge. Because like, if Reigns won, like, then why would Brock even come back? Yeah, yeah, true. You know, Brock. You know, you say I've already beat him four times, and nothing to prove against him. Yeah, true. So, I'm still looking for it. That's fine. That's not a huge deal. Well, no, I am kind of. I am. I am actually kind of curious about that because. You know, I did feel like that was kind of a clue as to which way they were going to go, and mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think that he actually that he referenced them, but I, I want to find out for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, let's see here. Oh, here we go. Is that is that a report about it? Uh, this is a report about it. Uh, yeah, said uh, Bobby Lashley feared Brock Lesnar as a college athlete. Um, oh, so he did mention Lashley. He in did it. mention. Lashley. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, but anyways, that's probably the match we're gonna get at SummerSlam for the Universal Title: Lesnar versus Bob Lashley. Who goes over? Oh, Brock. Yeah. And when is he gonna get? Like, when is when is this gonna end? Mania. Between SummerSlam and Mania, how many title defenses? Zero. Wow. He's been preparing for uh, uh, his match against Cormier. Zero. He's not gonna defend that title. And, and we saw. Here's the thing. We saw. Uh, you're right. We saw tonight. What's going to take its place? The Intercontinental title. The main event was the Intercontinental mm-hmm. title. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, Finn Balor wearing some great new ring gear. Chrome. Yeah. You like to refer to it as it's pewter. Pewter. It was yeah. like a really dark gray metallic. Oh, it was great. It was it fantastic. Was, it was amazing. He's got the best ring gear. He's so cool. He's the coolest. Um, taking on uh, Baron Corbin, um, who also has a uh, new ring gear. It's just a dress shirt and pants and a vest. It's a different shirt now I yeah think. yeah at least he's changing his shirt he was wearing like a, a black ensemble yeah it was, it was a decent match baron uh can keep up with with smaller smaller faster um competitors baron had a little kick part. in a step didn't he yeah a little kick in a step yeah that was good um but in the end finn picked up the win um capitalizing on baron's most notable yeah it wasn't weakness. it wasn't with the coup de gras nope it wasn't with the 19 16 16 it was with the roll up. Yep. Everybody <laughs> knows the Baron's weakness. You know, man, that bugs the crap out of me though. You I like I like that like there's consistency. Like if you're gonna pick yeah. an easy win against Baron Corbin, just roll him up. Yeah, but it's the it's the the little guy tricking the big guy with a roll up. I love that it's Baron Corbin, and you're right, the consistency is great. But like, you know, oh, the only way you can beat me, I mean, are they gonna go into SummerSlam? Seems that way. Seems that way, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Because Baron was going that's for fine. Baron was going fine. for end of days, and then Finn kind of reversed it, and then managed to get a roll up on him and pick up the win. I'm okay with that. I mean, we saw this match. This match wasn't that bad. No, it's fine. Know? It was fine. If they kick it into another gear for SummerSlam, that'd be good. Mm-hmm. Um, does that mean Baron goes over at SummerSlam? Maybe. I think they're on the road to trying to get Baron over a little bit more. Yeah. I think they're doing that, and I think it's going to be at Finn Balor's Finn's expense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, backstage, the Bludgeon Brothers destroy Team Hell No. Um, beat him up all over the place. Yeah. And then uh, I think it was Rowan got his mallet, his hammer, uh, pinned Kane's leg between wall and door mm-hmm. and hit door with Ouch. hammer. And then, uh, you know, to kind of write Kane out of the, t- the SmackDown tag title match. Yeah. And well, apparently, he's go, it's, yeah. It's, 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 you know, storyline uh, covering up for a legit injury. Mm-hmm. We read after the show while we're eating dinner. Too many, uh, too many planning yard signs, dude. Could be. Do politicians actually plant the yard signs? I, I feel so. like those are the actual neighborhood people. No, they do. Because if yeah. you go to like a campaign's website, you can well, buy the yard signs. No, you, you buy them. Yeah. Oh, I think so. Because it goes to the campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's like a contribution. Can I just do like a going in raw yard sign? That's a good idea. Vote. That's actually not a terrible idea. That's Find a very it, good idea. Findomarket.com. Yeah. Lead up to the ele- to the to the midterms. There you go. Get a going in raw yard sign. Yeah. Vote Stephen Larson. Yeah. That'd be good. 2018. 2018. Vote with your ears. Yes. Um, After that, we had Oscar versus Carmella for the SmackDown Women's uh, Championship. Talked about an overbooked match. So uh, James Ellsworth was suspended above the cage within, in, uh, yeah, or in, the, in the, the ring. Sorry, in a shark cage. And within minutes, as soon he, as the match began, he dropped some chain down to the ring. Drops a chain. Then uh, Kyoto catches that. Was it? Yeah, I think it was no, Kyoto. no, it was Oscar. Uh, Carmella reaches out for it. Yeah. Oscar steps on her hand. But then Kyoto sees it, and Oscar's like, "You know what is this all about?" And Kyoto's like, "Here, give me the chain." And then uh, while he's distracted, Ellsworth drops some mace mm-hmm. down. Carmella's trying to hide that. She doesn't. She is not successful in spraying mace. She loses that. Ellsworth then uh, tries to unlock the cage. Uh, Oscar and Carmella go to the outside. Oscar drops Carmella with a nice looking uh, uh, snap suplex on the outside. Ellsworth escapes, but like a scarf that he's wearing on his ankle kind yeah. of catches up. on the, the bottom of the cage. He was yeah. actually later on when he was hanging upside down because he's stuck there and he's hanging upside down. His shirt fell down. You can see he had a brace mm. around his midsection, which I'm sure he had like a tether that goes up to his uh, ankle that was actually latched to the cage. Well, yeah, and also the cage started out really low. Yeah. Like it was maybe a couple feet above their head. So it's yeah. probably like, you know, the bottom was probably like eight feet up. Yeah. And it, you know, once he started dangling, you know, it just lowered a couple of feet so that he can kind of, you know, it, brace himself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was super goofy. Yeah, it was. So uh, Ellsworth is 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 caught on the cage. Um, Oscar comes in and they say that uh, Oscar's treating Ellsworth like a heavy bag. Yeah, she starts, just starts striking. Him yeah, yeah, kicks and punches yeah. and strikes all over the place. I mean, it was amusing stuff, but it just feels like I get, <clears throat> I get you're gonna do this overbook comedy crap. It doesn't feel right with Asuka. Yeah. However, if her big moment is going to be uh, at SummerSlam when she wins it, I just I want her to have that damn title. I know. You know, I want her to have that damn title. Um, I don't want this to be like a Nakamura situation that we just saw. Oh, I know. Where he gets match after match after match after match after match, and he comes up short. It kind of kills. It kind of kills him a little bit. Kills the mystique a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um. So, anyways, uh, Asuka's going off on on Ellsworth. Um, some WB uh, stage crew comes to the ring and they start to lower the cage down a little bit to try to free Ellsworth. Yeah. So instead of the cage being, I don't know, six to seven feet above the ring, it is now maybe five and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Oscar gets tired of it, starts tossing him out of the ring, starts going after Ellsworth some more. Carmella comes in, pushes Oscar headfirst into the bottom of the cage, yeah. gets the pin. Yeah. Um, afterwards, Carmella runs up the ramp, leaves Ellsworth in there. Oscar starts destroying the WWE staff, starts destroying Ellsworth. She's mad. Yeah. Exceptionally angry. Super mad. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if this is going to be the build of SummerSlam or what, but uh, I want Oscar to have that title. Yeah. And I'd, I'd prefer we went over this list on our, uh, was it this? Yeah, this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, match Matches. we want to see at SummerSlam. Oscar Charlotte too was on that agenda, and I'm kind of disappointed though. I don't too. think we're going to get that. They I know. seem intent on doing the thing with Carmella where they put the title on her to kind of make a bigger star out of her. Um, 
After that, we had Jeff Hardy versus Shinsuke Nakamura. This was hilarious because uh, before the bell even rang, uh, the referee was walking uh, to, I don't know, give somebody's jacket to somebody or something like that. And while the referee wasn't looking, Shinsuke just rolled up right behind Jeff Hardy, who was walking towards his corner. Bang! Low blow. Jeff Hardy doubles over. He's a mess. Um, the ref turns around, confused by what's happening. Yeah. Oh, it was Danilo, the ref. Yeah. He uh, gets Jeff Hardy up eventually. Uh, Shinsuke, as soon as the bell rings, bolts over to Jeff Hardy. Full sprint. Kinshasa. One, two, three. Shinsuke Nakamura is your new U.S. champion. Uh, as he's celebrating, Randy Orton's music hits. He meanders out to the ring. Ambles. He he's the ambulator. Yeah. He ambles out to the ring. Uh, Shinsuke looks concerned. He's perched on top of one of the announce tables. tables. Yeah. Orton comes in, looks back at Jeff Hardy, who's still nursing his dick and his head. Yeah. Uh, Randy Orton looks at him. Ambles well, he, on well, over him to and Jeff Hardy. him and Nakamura have a bit of a stare yeah. down. They turn to him, goes to Jeff Hardy. Picks up his legs and then stomps him in, in, in the front area. In the front area again. So it's the mind games he's playing now with Nakamura. Yeah. that So that stomping on the, the front area, as you call it, the junk pelvic area, yeah. the genitals. Yes. That is a face move, even if it's at the expense of another face. Of one of the most over faces in the company, that's still a face thing because, A, it's Randy Orton. And B, it's him just playing mind games. Yeah, it's it's okay. been established that Randy Orton can pretty much do anything he can so do long anything as he's playing mind games. As long <laughs> as long as the other guy can be also perceived as a heel, Randy Orton can do whatever he wants, and he'll always be the in face. his effort to play mind games. Yeah. he will now, be faced. Now I propose we do a count out. Because they're going to fight at SummerSlam. That's yeah. a good match. That's going to be a good yeah, match. Yeah, it'll be fun. They had a good match on SmackDown a few months back. Yeah, that'll be a good match. I would think Shinsuke, they would wheel out Orton to, to have Shinsuke beat him. <clears throat> but never bet against Ugh, boring, boring face Randy Orton coming out on top. Champion Randy Orton. And that's one of the things that I propose we do a count out. Top 10 things you can always bet on or top 10 things you should never bet against. In the WWE, Brock. Bo boring face, Randy Orton, number one. Roman main eventing, WrestleMania, boring face champion, uh, Randy Orton. Uh, Brock Lesnar keeping the universal title. At home. At home. Yeah. I'm sure there are plenty more. Oh, yes. Uh, Next, so, yeah. Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens in a cage match. This was shocking. This yeah, ended in shocking manner. It did. And I was, I mean, look, a couple of, honestly, a couple of these, and Here's why I can't criticize Extreme Rules that much. Because a couple of these, there was at least five times during the course of this pay-per-view where I went, what the hell was that? Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah. That is a good thing. The end of this match was definitely one of those moments. Oh, yeah. Because Braun Strowman, so the match, the match was, the match was fine. It was, it was kind it's of Kevin an Owens and Braun Strowman. This, it's, it was a fun match. It was fun. It was so, to be a really fun match. Kevin, Kevin Owens started out the match just trying to escape. Like we've said, that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. He just tries, he tries to climb out. He tries to get to the door. Braun keeps on stopping him. He calls him a coward. So the fight's kind of on. Kevin Owens gives a, uh, he tries to get Braun off his vertical base. Yeah. Super kick a couple times, some strikes. Um, and eventually it leads to Kevin Owens handcuffing Braun Strowman. To the cage. The top rope. Uh, to the top rope. Yeah, to the top rope. And so uh, then Kevin Owens goes clear across the other side of the ring. Smart move. Crotch chops him. Crotch chops him. Uh, does the... Climbs up. Kiss goodbye. Yeah. Starts to climb up. Looks back. And Braun has free has just com has strong-armed himself out of the handcuffs. Yeah, he broke the handcuffs in half. He's a movie monster villain. A horror movie villain. But he's a good guy. But and and everybody guy. loves him. Exactly. So, um, so Braun sprints. Yeah. He makes it across the ring in like three steps. Oh, my God, yeah. And then leaps up the cage. Um, they both climb to the top. And then Braun just throws Kevin Owens off the top of the cage through the, uh, one of the announce tables. Now, uh, somebody on the Twitters uh, pointed out, and look, this is not, this is, this is, st it's still a terrifying spot. Oh, yes. But they did the thing with the big air cushion. Oh, good, good, yeah, good. So that's good. Good. Um, Take some of the, uh, the pain out of the fall, hopefully. But, you know, huge flipping shout out to Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman for coordinating that. That's two pay per views in a row that Kevin Owens taking a nasty bump. Yeah. Braun is holding on to the, to the, the supporting uh, uh, chain or whatever it is. And 
Kevin has to figure out there's a gulf between the cage well, there's and that. the barricade. And also on the announce table, there's monitors on either side, and they managed to get Braun and Kevin Owens, it's a joint effort, managed to get Kevin Owens almost equidistant yeah. between the monitors. Yeah. Like the most perfect landing spot is where he ended up going. One foot any direction out of out of place, and that's even I nastier. I could've, that's I could've, bad. I could have hurt real bad. That could be like a career-ending thing. Uh, downside for Braun is that Kevin Owens won. He, uh, he, yes. got, he got out of the cage first. Correct, yeah. Although we never saw his feet touch the ground. That's true. That's true. But Braun lingered a lot. So, you so can, yeah. You can, well. They put Kevin on a stretcher pretty much immediately. So if he was laying on the debris of the announce table, his feet might have never hit the floor. That's a good point. That's a good point. Why do we get into these issues with cage matches recently? I don't know, man. I don't know. I blame Roman Reigns. It should just be crystal clear. you think it would be. It's disappointing. In any event, I again, I was like... Like yeah, every everybody in chat and the live stream thing. Was, oh my god, I can't believe that. That was crazy. It was pretty nuts, man. It was cool though. I mean, that's that's a cool moment right there. Um, after that, we had Daniel Bryan taking on the Bludgeon Brothers. He was not going to be deterred from his, uh, you know, his quest to be his tag team running champion. mate, uh, Kane, uh, having uh, being footless. No, he still had a foot. It was just compromised. It was a bum foot. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, I, yeah. I wish they could have done like a Scott Steiner spot where he's on the apron and then he tries to tries jump. to jump and just falls instead. He just falls instead. Yeah. And this is actually. I mean, it's Daniel Bryan, so it's gonna be entertaining. But he managed to put forth uh, a heck of an effort to make a two-on-one handicap match against two giant men. Really entertaining, and you were starting to buy for a moment that he could maybe win it. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, I I didn't think it was going to happen, but no, I pretty much knew it wasn't going to happen because no, it was yeah. booked like he could win it early on. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so about two thirds of the way through the match, uh, Kane's music hits. Mm-hmm. Um, sporting a walking boot, a he weird. starts limping down to the ring. He's supposed to be powers of darkness. It's true. He's gonna, you know, why didn't he just conjure up some sort of spell? Or he could have used that, you know, to explain the benefits of healthcare. It's true. I know. As a, I'm pretty sure he's like a libertarian. He's probably not into the idea of universal health care because that would. I'm sure he's libertarians probably like you know they free like market taxes. solutions. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, anyway, so he starts lumping down um, uh, to the ring, gets in the ring or gets in the apron in in uh, their corner. Daniel Bryan gets there for a hot tag. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kane drops some punches, drops both the Bludgeon Brothers with choke slams. Tries to go for a tombstone, can't do it. Yeah, because he has he got a it. bum foot there. Yeah, he's got a bad foot. Again, why, you know, a master of the powers of darkness couldn't just... Whoosh, oh, I know. You know. Apparently there's limits to the powers of darkness, Steve. I'm pretty sure I've seen him, like, fire bolts. Like, fire bolts out of his hand before. Yeah. At some point in the last 25 years. Yeah, maybe that's something that, that, that decreases with age. As one gets older, the powers of the darkness starts to leave. <laughs> that could be. Like, you have a limited, you have a finite... Amount like of powers spawn. of darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I already used, I've used all my powers of darkness. Now I'm just, I can't do a cane voice. I've used 40 years of powers of darkness. The I've last used 20 years. 40 powers of darkness. 40 years of darkness. So Daniel anyways, uh, Bryan. Uh, uh, Daniel Bryan gets tagged back in. Um, and in the end, he eats uh, like a doomsday power bomb. I don't like them doing that with Daniel Bryan, I man. I know. Trying to protect that head. He loses. No, no misinterference, as was reported. I can yeah. say it now. No Miz on this show. Yeah. Now, it was also rumored. We're going to talk about this tomorrow. Hopefully, there's some more, oh, there's the some more uh, Info. confirmation about this. Mm-hmm. That Daniel Bryan might have indeed already re-signed with the WWE. Yeah, as I said, we'll talk more, or as you said, we'll talk more about tomorrow specifics. Mm-hmm. But Yeah. But Miz wasn't there at this pay-per-view. We had heard the rumor that perhaps he was scheduled to come out and help uh, or Bludgeon cost. Brothers retain team, team Hell No the other way the exactly. match yeah yeah and, and leading to a program between Daniel Bryan and The Miz and if Daniel Bryan was out the door he would put over The Miz yeah I mean it I I don't see how him re-signing changes would much change anything. that plan from tonight Mm-mm. Miz still could have done that mm-hmm. but we have six weeks that by the way that we don't need a build for Miz Daniel Bryan. We've had a build for seven years now. Yeah. Um, but, however, I am seriously looking forward to this. Mm-hmm. This is going to be an amazing next six weeks for Daniel Bryan and The Miz. Yeah. Yeah. Just let put those two guys out there. Let them talk. Let them talk. Yeah. And don't Ugh. just don't give them a whole lot of, uh, you know, constraints. 
Yep. Just let them go out there and do their thing. Yep. 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 Next up, we had surprisingly not the main event. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. But before that, Roman Reigns is backstage walking uh, to the to his match, and the B team uh, over the moon celebrating with their new tag titles. Uh, they said, Roman, if you beat Bobby Lashley, you can celebrate with us too. You could join B team. You could join the B team, and Roman just sort of looked at them and chuckled it off, kind of well, smirked it, was, it off. Well, they were well at first. It was kind of like vaguely menacing. He was looking at him. He did this, I think. Yeah. And then he they leave. He turns around. Then he does the smirk. Again, just very subtle. Yeah. He's like, his face is like, um, I don't know, man. Yeah. You put a picture of his face up and you get like five different emotions. Oh, yeah. From the same, yeah, you know? yeah that, that test where you yeah. say, what is this person feeling? What is this person feeling right now? Angry. Yeah. He chose the same picture to someone else. Happy. Happy. <laughs> exactly. Anyways. Uh, anyways, next. I don't, I don't know where I, where. Where is that most famously famously a remember. thing? I, I forget remember. now. I remember. Oh, there's that old in film school. We learned about that montage thing. Oh, I think oh, that's what yeah, it was. You're right. Yeah, but it wasn't like people were looking at the photos. They use, they use the same shot of a person, and whatever the shot afterward was yeah, would elicit right. a yeah. response. Like they had a shot of uh, of somebody just having a face, and then there's a shot of like a bowl of soup. Yeah, and then they said well, they're what? hungry. Exactly. <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Montage. Yeah, montage. Um, so Roman Reigns versus Bob Lashley. Um, match got off to a bit of a slow start, so much so that uh, the crowd was uh, chanting for beach balls. However, um, Bobby Lashley took a pretty nasty bump. Um, Roman Reigns more or less tossed him over the top rope. It looked like, so from my, when I looked at it, and I looked at it, you know, on the replay, because it was just, dude, it was, it was just it a was lot of, pers- it was a lot of person just thumping to the ground yeah, it was fast and it was violent. Yeah. And then when they did the replay, I swear, man, you can see Bobby Lashley reaching out for a rope. He had one hand on the top rope. Maybe he was trying to get the other hand. So he would land f- flat on his back. Okay, Instead, but, he landed on his left shoulder. But hold on a second. When did that hand on the rope disengage? Because I feel like for the majority of the tumble over, he was trying to get to it. No, he had one hand on the rope, but he was reaching his other hand for the rope. Was he? Yeah. Okay, all right. Because he, he had the one hand on the rope while he was making the arc over the rope until he was, like, parallel with the ground. Then he I, disengaged. I listened to a fantastic podcast about memory. Uh-huh. It was, what was it called? I forget what the podcast was called. <laughs> but it actually had to do with um, the, uh, the subtitle was uh, Free Brian Williams. Oh. And uh, they talked to a bunch of uh, psychiatrists who dealt with uh, memory. Mm -hmm. And they said, it really actually sounds like what happened with Brian Williams was simply misremembering. Mm -hmm. And they did it. They'd done a study after 9-11 where uh, they talked to people like, you know, when that stuff happens, when something big traumatic, they call it a light bulb incident. Mm -hmm. When something big traumatic happens, everybody knows about it. They interview people right at like the day after, like, where were you? What were you doing? What were you thinking? They interviewed them then six months later, mm-hmm. a year later, mm-hmm. three mm-hmm. years later, and 60% of the time they get it wrong. Six months later, hmm. they misremember what, so there. Yeah. So I'm, maybe I misremembered that. I just thought I saw it, but, uh, no, I think you, mean, you did see a hand reaching for the rope, but I think he, I'm pretty sure he had one hand. That could be, I think he had his left hand on the rope and he was reaching it looked, but it, right it just it looked like he was seriously trying to brace himself. And yeah, was like so I wonder if he was. Wonder if he was trying to hold both hands and then land on his back as opposed to landing on his shoulder because yeah, it looked could nasty because he could have tore up his shoulder or broke a collarbone or something like that with that with that bump. Yeah. After that, it seemed like the crowd got into it more. The 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 intensity of the match picked up quite a bit more. Um, uh, Lashley hit one of his stalling suplexes. Reigns hit a couple of Superman punches, including one on Lashley when he's on the top rope. Mm. I think it's before this. Yeah. Um, there you go. All right, hold on. Okay, so he's got both hands on. Oh, I mean, this isn't this. <laughs> so he, he, no, that was, he had both hands on, but when Roman Reigns goes like that, I think his hands come off, and then he just chucks them, and I don't think there's any hand on the rope at that point. Oh, they do a replay. Yeah. Um, uh, in the end, Reigns sets up for a spear. Oh, here so you watch go. this. So he jerks them off. Nothing. See. Oh, okay. He fl- Yeah. He well, he had that left. The 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 right hand was 
almost there. It was almost there, but it was like he, his hand was trying to grasp it. I think the, you know, I think that was this. Boy, oh, no, that was, that was a nasty bump. Anyways, uh, Roman goes for a spear, does his um, charges towards Lashley. Lashley meets him with the spear of his own and picks up the win. A yeah. clean win for Ooh, Bobby Lashley. A single spear? Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Man. So, yeah, the path is... So, let me ask you something, Mr. Uh, Predictions 2018. Um, because you did really good in this episode, mm -hmm. or in this pay-per-view. Um, when you originally thought Bobby Lashley to take on Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, you figured yes. Bobby Lashley's going to lose that match. Yes. And Brock Lesnar's not going to defend it again until, like... Mania, yeah. Mania, though. Yeah. That's a starting, long time out. But no, but starting November, he's gonna get. He's gonna be in fight camp, getting ready for Cormier. How are they storyline? How would they possibly justify the Universal Championship being gone? They're not that going long? to. They're gonna say Brock is out the door to the UFC. Why and wouldn't they just vacate no, the, it the whole? They might. I don't know. But the whole storyline is gonna be that Brock isn't defending the title. Therefore, he doesn't like WWE. He doesn't care about the fans. That'd be fun. I'd be. That'd be. I mean, what if they did a thing where they vacated it? What they might do is a thing. They they vacate it. Someone else becomes champ. Brock shows back yeah. up at Mania saying, yeah. no, I'm real champ. Something like that. I love champ versus champ. I love yeah. when both guys come yeah. in wearing the same belt. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. And, they, and by the way, that's something they do in UFC a lot. All the time, yeah. They Everybody have the interim champion. Interim titles. Yeah, yeah, someone gets hurt and can't defend the title. They have an interim championship. That'd be cool. I'd be down with that. Yeah. Uh, next, Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss. Another overbooked match. Um, Ronda Rousey was sitting ringside very early on the show. They put the camera on her. She showed her ticket. Um, uh, pretty quickly on, uh, there's some uh, interference by Mickey James. She starts beating down Natalia, who um, walked out with Nia for the match. Ronda Rousey says, that's it. Jumps over the barricade and starts going off on, on Mickey James, throwing her around the, the barricade, throwing her into the ring, back in the ring, beats her up. She gives her some sort of looking like it was like a Samoa drop it's almost kind of, kind of like what a Buddy Murphy's finisher is yeah kind of or yeah. Samoa drop position but there's a rotation to it yeah um, yeah she beat the heck out of her yeah and then uh, the, the uh, her and Alexa Bliss stare down at each other from the opposite sides of the ring they end up go over by the barricade and then Mickey James comes out of nowhere with the kendo stick and starts wailing away on Ronda Rousey that was dumb she yeah. just got her ass beat yeah by Ronda Rousey she should have been done for the match. Yes. That was like the biggest sort of leap in logic and, and, and just in wrestling logic. And here's the thing, too, is that a couple shots from the kendo stick kept Ronda Rousey out of the finish of the match. Yeah, yeah. Because Bliss and Mickey James get back in the ring with a couple chairs to start destroying Nia Jax with it, mm -hmm. with them. And then Bliss hits a DDT on a chair and pins Nia, retaining the title. But... It's like Mickey can get tossed into the barricade twice into the apron, um, gets hit with that move, and within a matter of like two minutes, she gets back up. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I don't like it. It's a bit much. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to get Bliss versus Rousey at SummerSlam. Rousey's going with the title at SummerSlam. Yep. Yep. And I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. It should be a fun match. Yeah, I hope so. Plenty of time to practice. Oh, yes. Uh, next up, we had not... The Intercontinental Championship match. We had the WWE title match. The match that had such esteemed names like Bruno San Martino behind it. Uh, uh, the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Who was the first? Wasn't it Buddy Rogers? Yeah, yeah, Buddy Rogers. Stone Bob Cold Steve Backlund. Uh, uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage. The Rock. Um, uh, Bret Hart. John Cena. Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Triple H. Yeah. The Undertaker. Randall Orton. Batista. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of great names, um, but it's going on second to last. Uh, Rusev versus AJ Styles, maybe because there wasn't a whole lot of drama here. The only thing that really happened of consequence was uh, partway during. Number one, they booked Rusev pretty strong. Mm -hmm. He kicked out of a great 450 splash mm -hmm. bit mm -hmm. um, late in the match. A lot of people were surprised about that. Uh, Aiden English, to try to help Rusev, uh, ripped the top turnbuckle pad off, exposing the turnbuckle. You know, what is that? What is that made out of? Uh, pure steel and maybe like some barbed wire. I don't know. It's the most destructive. It's like the, it's like the hardest substance on earth. Yeah, it's the most destructive substance on earth as well. Like yeah. many micro explosions go off yes, when you hit yes, it. Yes, yes. I don't know, but it, as soon as you touch it, you you out. Yeah, pretty much. Rusev charges towards uh, AJ, who is in that corner. AJ moves Rusev head first into exposed turnbuckle. Um, but it was after that that uh, AJ hit that springboard 450, and Rusev kicked out of. Yeah. 
But yeah. then AJ did like a running drop kick through the ropes, kicked English over by the announce tables, gets on the apron. Phenomenal form. He yeah. retains the title. So it seems like that might be the impetus for Rusev Day to, to split up. Okay. That's fine. I don't know. And look, man, as long as they book Rusev strong. I don't know. I like I, I much would prefer them as a as a face trio. I know. But I know. But if it's gonna be strong Rusev in a good strong program with somebody, I'm okay with that too. Oh man. The 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 face Rusev Day trio. Yeah, I know. It's money. I know. It's so much money. Why do WWE do this? They have this they have a money making machine in front of them and they have some idea in their mind of what certain talents are supposed to be. Yeah. And so they don't follow through on the path that would lead to money. How soon is it gonna be before we hear Rusev is unhappy with Tomorrow. his Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday at the latest. <laughs> the latest Tuesday. Oh, coming in. And then right they'll put now. a tweet up joking about it. Yeah. PW Insider has it. Rusev's not happy. His contract's coming up. He wants to be released, even though his contract's coming up. And then next week, Dolph Ziggler's contract is up. I know. Every three months, Dolph's contract is <laughs> every up. Every three months, Dolph, and every three months, Rusev. <laughs> but he's unhappy and wants to be released as well. I, mean, I always go back to when Bray Wyatt debuted. If they had booked him right, Money making machine. So much money and that great merch they have for him. And Man, just, nobody's buying it. And they just nobody buys that. They just did, they just didn't do it right. Yeah, just didn't do it. I mean, look at Nakamura and NXT. Oh man, we went to NXT Brooklyn too. What forty percent of the uh, of the audience had Nakamura shirts on? Forty five, forty six. A ton. Yeah, try a ton. Yeah, they a could lot. easily Nakamura could have got called up to Maine, but a massive, massive face. Yeah, it could have happened. Man. And they do it. No. How soon is it going to be before we hear Nakamura unhappy with his current role wants to be released? Well, he just won a belt, so I don't think so. Probably not. It's not the belt, though. It's kind of a toy crap belt. Uh, so next up, we had a Seth Rollins interview where he talked about being very happy with his role in WWE. Mm -hmm. He's in the main event, and it's mm -hmm. for a secondary title. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler in one of the more under underwhelming under um, it, it, it was devoid of drama for the most part didn't live up to nearly its Here's, potential yeah um, i think the the match they put down put on on raw a couple weeks back was better than this yeah because there was drama involved the hey. problem was with this they uh, in the span of about 10 minutes there were seven falls yeah it was over like the first 10 minutes were wildly overbooked yeah, and it was between two guys and for about five minutes, Drew McIntyre. Yeah. But why? I mean, you, most an average main event Raw match goes between 18 and 20 minutes and how many falls take place in that match? Mm -hmm. One. Oh, no. So why does it all of a sudden that within 10 minutes, 15 minutes of the match starting, there's seven falls? Yeah. I mean, it. I can only suspend my disbelief so much. I, I, I understand... Like the first one that Seth got, so at 25, 24 ish, 25 and a half minutes left in the match, Seth pins Dolph with the cradle. So we're under, to, we're at about four, yeah, we're four about and four and a half, four and a half minutes, in. minutes in. Seth pins Dolph with a cradle. And then about three and a half minutes later, he pins Dolph again after a stomp. Okay. So now if he had done the, the second one, about eight minutes in, makes sense. Hits a stomp, makes sense. And then when Drew comes in and destroys Seth, it would make sense. Mm -hmm. Why? First. Dolph would lose that fall via DQ. Seth would go up 2 nothing, And then right afterwards, Dolph would get uh, score an easy pin because Drew beat him down, him with Claymore. Yeah. But then, uh, then, but then Dolph, within the span of four or so minutes, less than four minutes, got four pinfalls. Yeah. Based on that one beatdown. It's too much. It's too much. And it just sucks all the drama out. Yeah. And the audience uh, pretty much... I, it was at early least, on. And, yeah, it was I'll early be honest, on. man. They started counting down to 10, the 10 sec, last 10 seconds of every minute, um, like it was the Royal Rumble. Yeah. And at the end, when the, the, the clock hit minute in two zeros, they'd go, eh. Like, dude, no offense to anybody out there in Pittsburgh. We have lots of friendos out there, and we love them so much. But, man, come on. Like, you, do it twice. It's All kind right. of amusing, but just because you have a... And then when they took the clock off the big screen, they booed and started... Chanting, we chanting, want the clock. we want the clock. Like, are you, are you just an arena full of toddlers? What's going on there? I don't know. Give me a break. I don't know. And then the, the largest pop of this entire match was when they put the clock back on with about nine and a half minutes left. Yeah. 
Um, so let's review these pinfalls real quick. You got to the, fir the first one, 25, 24. Uh, Seth catches Dolph with Cradle, gets the pin on him. 22 04. Uh, Seth pins Dolph after Stomp. Mm -hmm. um, Drew gets right in there right away, beats Seth Rollins all over the place. Uh, the ref tosses him. Mm -hmm. Drew says, All right, I'll go. Claymore's Seth. Then he finally leaves. Yeah. Um, immediately. And so Dolph loses that pin. Here's another thing. So as soon as Drew got in there to beat up Seth, the, the ref said, All right, no, DQ. Seth yeah. gets his fall. Yeah. At what point does a new fall begin? Because Drew was beaten on Seth for a good two and a half minutes. After the ref already said, hey, that's a pinfall right there. At that point, there should have been a reset. So if something else triggers a DQ, which it did because Drew continued to beat on Seth, that should have been another fall. Even if you give the, the ref some liberty to, to try to clear the ring before the, the next fall begins. At that final Claymore should have been. Well, no, yeah. no. Well, here, I'll take it back even further than that. Okay. Because uh, Drew attacks Seth in the ring. They make it out to the apron area. Yeah. Um, once they make it back in the ring, for sure then, do fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's when the ref yeah. finally tossed Drew. But, yeah, yeah, w w when Drew dropped that Claymore after being tossed, that should have been another DQ. There really should have been, like, three DQs there. I know. There really should have been. Anyways, so Drew leaves. Dolph goes over to Seth. Uh, 1937 gets the pin. Mm -hmm. um, he stands up uh, about 25 seconds later or so, 30 seconds later, super kicks Seth when he finally makes it to his feet. feet uh, 3 2 Seth. Yeah. Um, and about two minutes later, uh, Dolph pins Seth after a zigzag. One minute later. 1852 to 1752. Sorry, one minute yeah. later. Let's look at the next one. Uh, zigzag. So now that's three pinfalls in less than two minutes. That's too much. I understand they want to book the clay more strong. They want to book uh, Drew strong because he's incredible. But the zigzag? That's too much. And then two minutes later, uh, Dolph pins Seth with a roll-up with his feet on the ropes. He's up 4-3. Yeah. So we're uh, about half, less than halfway through this match, and we've already had seven pinfalls. It's just it, – it's, it's, it's a stretch. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't yeah. suspend my disbelief too much. I know. That's too much. Um, and then we'll get another pinfall for another 12 and a half minutes. Yeah. We're at 308. Seth pins Dolph after a, a slingshot into the ring post. Tying it so up. it's tied 4 4. Yeah. As time is expiring, Seth hits a super kick and a stomp. He cl crawls over. Right as he puts his arm on Dolph, time expires. Yeah. So it's tied 4 4. Clocks triple zero. Um, cue Dolph's music. He gets his belt. He starts walking up the ramp. Of course, it, is, it seems tradition. Every Ironman match ends in a tie, and whatever the general manager is of that respective brand has to come out and say, no, we're restarting the match, sudden death overtime. Why isn't this just a damn rule that says if it's tied at the end, you automatically it go to sudden simply death. goes into sudden death? It's so silly. It is. Because Kurt Angle comes out and says, this still isn't resolved. Well, yeah, it is. It is. They, they wrestle for 30 minutes, and it's tied. And, Each and man got four falls on the other, it's a tie. Dolph should retain. Yeah. That it's it's resolved. Dolph wins. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they got to please the people or whatever. So, uh, yeah. So, literally moments after he says, you know, start start this match. We're going to sudden death next fall. Wins. I swear it was like the next freaking camera shot. We see Drew McIntyre, and he's up on the apron. Seth gets distracted by him, knees him off, or at least tries to. Uh, Dolph uh, runs into the ring, yeah. hits a zigzag, and pins Seth. Yeah, he wins. He gets Why the final Kurt fall. Why did come back out and say that's not what I was talking about, Drew? You were banned. No, that fall doesn't count. Let's take it back into like if you're going to overbook, just do go I all know, the way I with know, it. I know. And it's like I get it. They want Dolph to retain, and that's how you do it. I just thought it was supremely silly. Now that being said, I don't remember last year's Extreme Rules. It probably was a big mess of booking. Um, if they get continually more and more ridiculous with uh, booking scenarios, I would actually be okay with it. Because it'd be like, you know, one giant comedy pay-per-view. And if that's what we can expect every year, Ooh. I'm okay. What? What do we have? Last year was Bliss versus Bailey and the kendo stick on a pole match. Oh, that's so bad. But the cage match was was yeah, I was, decent. was good. Was Seamus Cesaro Hardy's? 
This was really good. Joe versus Finn versus Bray versus Reigns versus Rollins. Okay. I think remember that being pretty good. And then I remember the Miz versus Dean for the Intercontinental title being pretty good. Well, I remember I love that Joe Brock build. Oh, yeah. Joe doing the Heyman stuff. Well, that was a year oh, ago. Oh, that was huh? great. Wow. So, yeah, like I said, it wasn't a boring pay-per-view, except for, oddly, the one match that we felt was going to be off the hook. Super exciting. Was... That was oddly kind of boring. Yeah. And then it was weird, and, and it just sort of sucked. Um, so, that was Extreme Rules. Mm-hmm. Kind of hard to describe. Just sort of a weird pay-per-view. It happened. Yeah, it happened. Exactly. Uh, to recap predictions. Oh, dear. 31-46. Well done. Good job. You're, 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 you got a strong 2018. After uh, just a sloppy, dismal, dismal atrocious 2017. 2017. Candy predicting. It was That's awful. a hell of a score, though. Uh, yeah. I should have followed my gut and said so, Owens had a chance to win that cage match. If. That was a possibility. If. Yeah, because you were talking about that. If there would have been an eight point swing on Reigns Lashley. Mm hmm. Uh, so that would have been 38 to 45. Still would have won. Wait. Oh, because you only had one. Oh, okay, okay. Eight point swing would have been yeah thirty nine okay all right well uh, it didn't come down to one match that's good no I know we we suspected it would mm-hmm. all right anyways that's it for predictions you might be the Discord champion by the way oh that'd be cool yeah you did you did really well here I don't know if there's like a belt or something for that I think they have a belt neat maybe you'll get a belt that'd be cool that's cool right on I'll be sure to touch it if I allow you to no I, I just won't tell you that I'm doing it. Well, that's gonna be. I'm gonna take it home with me. It's not gonna be left here. Why aren't you gonna leave it here? We can't display it proudly for the Discord people. The we can't on the show. But when I go home, against Discord, nothing. When we're here, we're doing the show. Belt will be displayed. Absolutely. But when I go home, Belt goes home with me. I'm getting the idea that if you're I'm the champion, anti Discord. Uh, no. Definitely getting an anti Discord vibe from oh, your your vibes are off. This guy over here, friendo. My vibes are holy. All right, here no. press the. Stop button. Let us know what you guys see. I'm totally comfortable. Really? Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. Your shenanigans. Goodbye.